Um, so yeah, I, know, I know it was, I know it was late notice to, to come up and say, Hey, you got a Friday morning. So, uh, thank you, Alex. I'll hit record. And if y'all need to go back and reference this at any time, you're welcome to, what we'll do is we'll kind of go over the expectations. Uh, we'll go over any questions that you have. Hey, Sandra, how are you? Good. 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 I think we would have had 18 in a class had uh, Dr. Kirby and the university not agreed to split this thing. So uh, this is going to be way more conducive to your learning, to actually getting somewhere. Um, most of you, this is your first practicum. We'll have a couple of folks, Chambry and Mariah, who, who were in uh, practicum one last semester. Hi, Chambry. How are you? Or, hi, Mariah. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Good, good. Hi, Shamri. How are you? I'm doing good. Good, good. Shamri, are you on campus? I see the the neon light or the fluorescent lights in the tile ceiling. No, actually, we just moved buildings because our program's growing so much. So we had to move to another building, and we just moved yesterday. Oh wow! Where did you move to? Um, North Grand. By where we were located before a couple oh, years ago. I know where that is. It's kind of by the underpass in the recycling place. Yes, yes. Northwest is. Northwest Center is right there. Okay, okay, that makes sense. All right. Um. So so anyway, Mariah and, and Chamry have been in uh, practicum last semester, so uh, they'll hopefully uh, you know, and it's good to have that sort of uh, mixture as well you don't want just all practicum one practicum two because there are different obstacles that you all encounter one thing that will come in handy uh mariah and chambry both took comps this fall the rest of you or excuse me this spring and the rest of you will take comps this fall uh and so it'll be nice to get their perspectives on that process and what they what they did to succeed so um that'll be nice to get their perspectives on that we won't do that today but we'll definitely that'll be part of our agenda as we go out throughout the semester one of the things that will be different from mariah and chambry is this is going to be fast paced gang i mean we only have eight weeks normally this is a 16 week course and you have more time um, that can be good in that you're getting a lot of things here all at once it can also be overwhelming because there's a lot to do in this class. Um, there are a lot of responsibilities. There's three videos. Those are usually the biggest hassle with this class is, oh my gosh, how am I going to get the video? I've got to get the transcript. I've got to reflect on it. Um, and I know those are hassles, but at the end of the day, those, I can't think of a more important piece of your learning than those things. It's like, oh, my voice sounds horrible and I don't want to watch myself. And it's just, you know, it's nail, you know, on the chalkboard cringeworthy, but, you know, just we're going to do our best and, and get through the thing. So um, everybody should have had experiences with that. Before I get started, I'm going to just go over the design of the Blackboard course. This will be a full class. I mean, we'll go all the way to 10 um, for sure. Um, and we probably will take the whole hour and a half each each week because there are quite a few of us. If there were only three or four, sometimes I might cut a class a little bit short, but there are quite a few of us, so we'll probably go this full hour and a half. Um, any questions before uh, I get started with just going over the course design and, and what to look at and expect? I was just going to say that I might have to hop off a little bit early um because i gotta get a couple more things done before i leave town where are you going i'm going to kansas for uh to see my dad oh. and i'm trying to get the office ready for monday <laughs> okay yeah yeah okay okay and y'all just moved yesterday so that's probably needs something just set up okay hey mariah um for me i usually have groups at this time like all day friday and I don't know how, I don't know what to do about that or what suggestions you might have. Okay. So yeah, we need to be here at least 75% of the time. We are going to miss one class. There's one class I can't be here for, and that is June 30th, I think. Uh, I think that's the date. Let me double check that. Yeah, so I can't, we're not going to have class June 30th that week. You'll need to get with your uh your site supervisor and have a little extra time 
or maybe you could hop in with Dr. Kirby over in, there in her group if you had a pressing issue. Um, uh, Mariah, so there'd be maybe two options. Um, one might be to hop back in over with Dr. Kirby if she has a different time. The other one would be to get somebody to cover your group. Okay. So uh, otherwise, we do need to be here, you know, at least 75% of the time. That's just, that's in our, that's in our, like from, from policies from our regions. So. So I have the, I have a similar issue. I only have every other Friday off. And so I can, I can see how I can make that work. Um, what we might, okay. So if you have something like that, if you can at least attend an hour of the hour and a half that we have, um, you know, I think I think we could probably work with that. We'd, we'd have you if you had an issue, we'd have you go first uh, before, you know, the other folks in the group would go. Um, I don't know if that helps, but but there's a little bit of flexibility. But um, but but yeah, most most classes people need to attend. Okay, I can I'll try and rearrange my groups. Sorry, Megan, I didn't mean to interrupt. You're OK. OK, thank you. I'll, I'll talk to my supervisor and see if I can not see clients during that time and and try to be available. Um, okay. I know at Grand I have five hours a week that I can use towards practicum, but I I think that's just towards like getting the hours in. Does this class count towards getting our hours in? Yeah, I can't count for face to face, but it, it does count for indirect for sure. So that's number one. Make sure you count the time we spend in class because this is practicum. So okay. this, this does count toward your hours. What you can't do is you can't count time for another class. Okay, so that's usually the, the one of the first questions is, hey, what actually counts as, uh, you know, as, as credit for the hours for this class? So let's kind of go in. That's probably a good way to, to jump into this is uh, let's let's talk about ways that you do get credit for for practicum hours. So. Let me let me just share this and we'll say that things things that count things time that count for and let's go with indirect first because they're a little bit different. Indirect hours so things that would count. This class <laughs> so so coming to this class every you know every week you, you know you're going to get you know 90 minutes. Okay, so there you go, right off the top of the, uh, you know, as we as we get started here, you get, get 90 minutes times eight, whatever that comes out to. Um, so there are a lot of things. So indirect, this is going to be the more exhaustive list. Studying for comps. A lot of times when you're in semester, like I don't expect you to spend a lot of time trying to get comps studied for this this uh, summer because it's going to be busy. Um, but when you get to the fall and, and I think, you know, Mariah and Chambry could tell you, yeah, I got a lot of hours just because I was studying for comps. OK, the doors are locked um, here. Let me gang. Let me hit pause just a second. I, I uh, I've got an issue I've got to take care of. Um, I'll be right back.
Man, y'all are quiet. I couldn't believe you. <sighs> Chatting it up while I'm gone. Okay, everybody's in a daze. All right, let's get started again. Sorry, the, the cable person needed help. Um, so we are, uh, so spend time studying for comps, uh, session preparation. So as you think about your clients getting ready, you know, get, getting set up, that might include also like physical preparation, like like what Mariah's, or sorry, what Shamri's talking about is getting her, you know, office set up. If you need to prepare physical space, you're gonna have to do the same thing when you're a real therapist. You're gonna have to like, okay, what do I need? Do I need to get my laptop here? Do I need to get paper? Do I need, I mean, use that time. I mean, we have a lot of flexibility when it comes to indirect hours. Um, if you just want to improve your own, like just reading a book, reading a book about counseling or, or studying, you know, let's say you're just doing like research because you're, you're passionate about it. For instance, I didn't bring the, the magazine in, but there was a, there was a book about uh, counseling for human sexuality. You know, that's a, that's not a class that we're going to, um, a lot of you are going to be able to take because we only offer it every other year. Um, but there, there's a, there's a textbook out that, that I, I saw just my latest issue of, of, uh, counseling today is, uh, is available. And I thought, you know, I might just get that book to read it. So, you know, if it comes up in a class, cause I've not, I wasn't ever trained with that. So, um, it might be, it might be worthwhile if, if you want to, you know, develop something that's like, uh, like a specialty to you. So continuing with that. So like reading a book about counseling um continuing education so we're going to host a continuing education event uh on june 9th next week at um oh my gosh so that's going to conflict with this time <laughs> okay so i thought about another conflict um uh, okay well we might modify our next week's time because I can't undo that. Uh, but continuing education events. So if, if your place, if your practicum site um, hosts a continuing education event, you get a chance to get motivational interview trained, TFCBT, whatever. You know, if somebody hosts like an individual like continuing education event, count those hours. Those definitely count. So if you came to ours, we have three hours of ethics in the morning, three hours of supervision in the afternoon. Uh, it is free for students. Um, let's see here. Other things, uh, you know, meeting with your site supervisor. So each week you're going to be required to meet an hour with your site supervisor. That's going to count. Sarah, you have your hand up. What, what, what else? Was that just an automatic thing? No, um, I do have a question. Yeah. Uh, so in a couple of weeks, I'm taking a seeking safety training. Can I count that? Absolutely, you can count that. One hundred and fifty-seven percent. Yeah. So, yeah, I get <laughs> getting seeking safety trained. That counts. That's going to help you be a more effective counselor. Uh, you know, basically anything that's related to you becoming a counselor, outside of you uh, studying for another class. You know, putting time in, working on another class, you can't count other class time. But if you're developing yourself as a counselor, like, you know, note taking, you know, documentation, those things. A lot of things. If you have any questions, just email me, but there's a lot of things that count. Direct hours. All right, what are, what are y'all thinking about here? What are some things that might count for direct hours? Any assessments you might do? Yeah, assessments. What else? Groups, intakes. Groups. Yeah, intakes. What else? Individuals. Yes. Co-therapy. If you're if you're if you're observing, if you're shadowing. In in our other our first practicum, we were only allowed to um count like I think the first three weeks or so, but that was a 16-week course. So 
I didn't know if we were okay. still able to do that. So it sounds like Dr. Kirby and I need to get that. So you have different practicum settings and different and different practicum limitations in different settings. So for instance, if you were at Meadow Lake Hospital, they have, you know, they're governed by JACO, a Joint Commission on Health. And so there's only so much that practicum students can do there. You're not going to have your own clients. Um, I'll follow Dr. Kirby's. I've been a little bit more lenient with that, particularly when we were when we had you know COVID restrictions. Uh, it sounds like Dr. Kirby and I. Need, so uh, observing and shadowing. Uh, I'm going to allow you to because this is this is my reasoning on that. There may be a time where you just need to observe somebody a different style. So, for instance, if you're just like shadowing one other clinician, like if you just watch me. Uh, I, I don't, my style may be very, very different than yours. My personality is very likely different than yours. So it's going to be beneficial for you to see different people do this. Um, so I'm not, I'm going to be probably a little bit more liberal with that in this class for you to observe and shadow. Now I do, I do want you to get your own experience. Don't, don't get me wrong. When you get to practicum two, uh, it's my understanding in practicum two, you need to have your own clients. For sure, and be and be running your own. So I, anyway, I'll get with Dr. Kirby on that to make sure we're consistent. But um, if you if you if you can give me a decent reason why you know I need to count some shadowing observation hours, you're likely going to get credit in this class. So I have just based on what you're saying and based on the meeting I had yesterday, I have lots of concerns that I think I need to unpack with you. Okay. Um, and I don't want to take up this class time. No, for it, now is the time. Uh, now, okay. now, now is the time. Um, so Northwestern and Grand have differing opinions as to what is acceptable for practicum and what is not. Um, some of the discrepancies I'm noticing so far, one is uh, they say, I absolutely will not have my own caseload as a student, period. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to practicum two, that's going to be an issue. Mm -hmm. um, there's also differing opinions as to what counts towards uh, direct hours like some and you and I have previously touched on this too. Mm -hmm. Some of the rehab stuff that I do, they consider like if I'm using motivational interviewing or, you know, whatever in rehab, they would count that but Northwestern doesn't. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like I'm kind of stuck between two opposing sides and I, I'm trying to make sure that I satisfy the requirements of both parties. Okay. Okay. Well, it sounds like I need to have a sit down again with, with, uh, with Grand. Um, so what Grand has done in the past, my understanding with our students is to allow time for our students to meet with clients outside of so, for instance, this this is my this is my issue that I've had with this. When I was clinical director at Youth and Family Services, we went through a couple of, of situations where people were committing fraud. And so, what fraud is? It's it's billing for something that either didn't occur or is different than what is occurring. So, if if you are if you are doing therapy, there's two different billing codes. There is there is a therapy code, and then there's a there there is a code for rehab. Those are two, according to insurance, those are two separate functions. And so, if you're doing therapy, you have a license, or you're supervised, or you're in practicum. Now you can't bill for therapy, and that's the issue with with an agency. An agency's an agency's ethics may be financially different <laughs> than and financially directed uh which which is inappropriate because there, there's not a, there's not room if we go read the aca code of ethics or oklahoma rules there's not room for okay well because of the finances we need to do it this way that's not that's not how it works so it, i i understand that employees often have quotas that they have to okay i have to meet this many hours to be able to get my paycheck 
right? So the way that this needs to work, it needs to be completely separate. If you're billing for rehab, you're not doing counseling. Right, I understand. I, I, that was just an example. I do have some alternate options that I could go with, but it's you, you making the comment that we have to have our own caseload and we have to be managing things. I is, said ideally. So I said, so ideally. ideally. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I, ideally, you have your own caseload. Um, now, like for instance, as I was going, Meta Lake Hospital, you're not going to have your own caseload. But you can do practicum at Meta Lake Hospital. So what, what typically a person does when they do their practicum at Meta Lake Hospital is they observe like no other. They may do some co-therapy with, with the therapist, you know, in the session with them. But because of JACO, because of their standards, they can't have their own clients. It sounds like that'd be something very similar, you know, with Grant. Yeah. And that's, that's okay. It's, the, it's not, okay. it's not a, it's not a, like, we, we can't pass go. It's like, we can work through that. Okay. I just like whatever satisfies the requirements of both parties, I'm cool with doing. I just want to make sure that I can get my hours in and, and satisfy both parties requirements at the same time. What, I, what I, what I hope is still there is because this is what i've what i've thought, thought was happening in the past which i think was happening i mean i guess i could be wrong but um a person satisfies their billing requirements for grand whatever they need to their hourly face to face and then on top of that okay now i have this client what's tricky with that though is that you still use your rehab clients and then you're not billing for rehab for your counseling. That's what's that's what has been the the my experience in the past with Grand. Uh -huh. And so um, that's difficult because you've already established a relationship where you're teaching, you're helping, you're the advocate, and now you're a counselor. And we, you know, we that's that's an early discussion in this program is like okay, strategies. So strategies you're breaking down that lay helper, you know, tendency, and you're becoming a counselor. So, and I would say Abby's going to be dealing with something very similar to that too, at at Bill Johnson because she, you know, she can't necessarily. So, so she's going to have her own clients, be because we do have a conscience. It's a little bit, it's a little bit more clear with Bill Johnson because we we have a, a very clear and longstanding contract. But but Abby has her role as you know rehab and teaching and and group you know rehab groups, but she's also going to have her own clients. Which I'll, I'll be honest, it's going to be hard to have a, a, an in depth relationship because they kind of already see Abby more as a um, you know authority teaching. Um, so that that's just that, that's just kind of the nature of what we're dealing with. There there very rarely is a perfect situation, and so we just we try to roll with it. And and unless you're just independently wealthy and can, yeah i'm just gonna freelance and, and volunteer my time just to go out and you know do all these things for free okay that's that that's great but that's not life for for the majority of us so um <laughs> so i think the same thing might be said for mariah and chambry i mean i don't is that can i is that accurate or tell me a little bit about your experiences yeah, that was a little difficult for me stepping into practicum because I was so used to being a rehab specialist and teaching all of the groups. And then I took on, um, I don't do any psychotherapy groups yet, but I do the like individual sessions with clients and I have several of those. And so that was different because I was used to them being in my groups and building that relationship aside from that was, was a little different. So it's difficult. It's it's on two fronts. It's not only are are your neurons used to communicating with that person that way, but their neurons are used to you being in a in a certain way too. So it's difficult to shift out of that, and and that's just something you'll struggle and hopefully move into. And that'd be something we can talk about each week. Is how how do you make that shift? I have gotten a little lucky though with um, new clients being put into the program. And so I got to start brand new with some of those people rather than me having already known some of my other clients from groups. So that, that kind of worked itself out. Yeah. Uh, you get to start on a different foot. Mm -hmm. But good. I mean, so this is all, I mean, Megan, yeah, absolutely bring this up now. Cause that, that it's, let's get started on the right foot um, before we go down the road and we're doing something that's not where we need to be. Okay. All right. 
Thanks. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So direct hours are more limited observing shadowing um, really anything with the client. I mean, if the client, if the client is present, I, I would, I would even include, so like treatment planning, the client, the client may or may not be present. I tried to at least include the client while we're coming up with goals. I mean, I may be writing them out after a session a little bit more clearly, but, but treatment planning to me is a direct hour, the direct service. So, um, uh, if, if the client is present, if any clients are present. So a good, uh, so what did you all do? I have, I have one other question here before we move on from that. Mariah and Shamri, what do you all do when court is in session for drug court or family court? Are those direct? Um, or direct? It's indirect. Yeah. indirect. I put it under indirect other. Mm -hmm. So like other activities and then I just put like court staffing and then court because we staff about the clients and then we have the whole court session. So yeah. Yeah. So so that so the staffing about clients. So so if you're if you're in a clinical meeting, that's you know clinical meeting on site. Yeah, that's an indirect. Questions about direct and indirect. I got a question. Also, sorry, I was just gonna say we also uh, counted like if you did any progress notes or um, contacted clients like on the phone, we uh, counted that as indirect yeah. hours. Yeah, note taking, documentation, Case management. Let's say let's say that you are a case manager and you have to do some of this, and it's with your clients. I would consider case management an indirect service because it's not therapy directly, but it definitely relates to. Hey, you know what? If Maslow's hierarchy is met, now we can work about now we can work on therapy and these direct hours over here. That makes me so happy to hear. I just want you to know. <laughs> well, I mean, same, same. it relates. I mean, it's it's just uh, it's just not counseling. So uh, hopefully, hopefully that will help. Um, we we do need to carve out those times. So so this summer is going to be difficult. And let's 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 go over this bridge now. To what if? I don't get all my hours. That's the, so there, there have been more incompletes in my experience in summer than in spring or fall. And because it's such a, a, a short amount of time, you have to get 50 and 100. So 50 face direct, face to face direct and 100 indirect. Usually people get the indirect. Um, the face to face are harder. And so if, if it comes down to it and your practicum one and it's like crap, Taylor. I got thirty-five done. We're in. It's in the July. I mean, what am I gonna flunk? Am I no, 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 no. I mean, as, as long as you're making progress, uh, you, what generally happens is for practicum one, you have to meet the minimum levels. You have to meet a hundred indirect, fifty direct for hundred fifty total. If you don't get there, you get an incomplete. And so until you can, so you have to get those hours completed before you can start counting hours towards practicum two. Does that making sense? So, so there have been times, particularly in COVID where I had over half the class didn't get their 50 hours. So we had to roll that over into the next semester. And so before they started accruing hours for that practicum, they had to finish up this practicum. Okay. And, and so, I think we had one scenario where just, just one person had a lot of difficulties. You have, if you get an incomplete, you get one year from the time of the incomplete. So let's say this summer I get, and don't do this, but, but you, this would be the maximum amount of time. July 31st, I'm at 25 direct and 50 indirect. So I'm halfway there. 
you would in in essence get a whole year until july 31st 2024 to get that incomplete remedied don't take that long because then you're gonna you're just gonna prolong your education may not get done so that would be the worst case scenario and that's any incomplete at northwestern you, you if you get an incomplete that by the end of that semester you have a, a calendar year to get that thing remedied okay i have a question mister yeah would self care be considered as indirect would what doing like a self care activity oh that's an me? excellent question um as it relates to counseling so let's say that I have had a horrible day and, and my clients have stressed me the, you know what, out. Uh, I, I can't. And so, yeah, a 20 minute, 30 minute yoga where you're clearing your mind, reflecting on. So, so like the exercises that you have to do for this class, please count, please count all of your videos as direct. Please, those are, those are direct hours. So, so let me let me add this under here too. So um, wait a minute, maybe this needs to go over here. So uh, I guess an indirect would be your transcripts, self reflections, um, assign you know assignments in here. Yes, the direct hours would be things like um, actual recorded sessions. So there's a, at least three hours right there, you know, if, if you go that long, so 45 minutes. That Those definitely count toward direct hours. So don't shortchange yourself there either. But yeah, if, if you need to like decompress, um, go talk to somebody about, so, so staffing, staffing a case, you know, st staffing a client with, with your supervisor or, or a colleague, you know. So, you know, obviously we're going to keep confidentiality. If, if the colleague's not connected, you're going to make sure you uh, and make sure that's an anonymous discussion. Yeah, Megan, go ahead. Uh, so at, at Grand, we currently, in my position, do safety planning. Um, and we do what's called ICPR, which is just the review of the treatment plan with the client. Um, and we do like the SNAPs section and the presenting problem and the presenting disposition is that when we do those tasks can those count as direct hours mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah those are therapy those are therapy things okay yeah alex i'm sorry I so for documentation do we just use this um this sheet that's in Okay, I think that's a good jump. I'm I'm getting ready to go into the nuts and bolts. I okay. think that's a good jumping off point. Let's let's go ahead and get into like the like, here's the concrete um, part of the class. Let's go ahead and jump go there. Okay, so let's find our class. Let's, if we, do you have a different Google Sheet than what Kirby was using, or is your do you have the same one to count hours? So if Kirby's you know. using a Google Sheet, uh, she needs to share it with me. <laughs> okay, well tell I her, could probably share it with you. Tell her to email it to me because I mm -hmm. I don't have it. I I basically have the PDF. And if she has something digital, that's hey, that's good. Yeah, it has like a, the whole week all of the weeks and it adds it up at the end of the week it'll it has like an accumulative it's pretty neat all right that hey that works so if she doesn't mind sharing that i don't mind sharing it with y'all actually if you could email me yours it might be good or somehow however the google sheet works i know you'd have to share it you'd have to create an excel so um either way okay so here's our here's our practicum and you all found the Zoom link, which is awesome. First thing is the handbook. Let's let's do that second. Let's jump into the syllabus. Make sure we go over um, our syllabus. Minimize some of this stuff. It makes it bigger. 
Oh, I need to change. Why did I upload this one? Oh my gosh. Okay. So it's summer. It's not spring of 2020. Let me make sure this is the right one before we even get into this. I may have just uploaded the wrong one. No, I changed the dates. But I, please know I will change this to reflect that we are in summer. I apologize for that. If you need to get a hold of me, uh, usually best bet is email. Um, I'm in and out of the office this summer, so you may or may not catch me if you try to dial the number. Um, let's see here. We don't have a textbook. However, I would hopefully, hopefully you've kept your strategies and techniques and supervised experience book, books. Those are uh, highly recommended. They'll be useful for comps too. Um, you had to take all the prerequisites to get here. And I know you all have. If you're LADC, if, uh, stop, let me stop there while that came up. Raise your hand if you're LADC, wanting hours for LADC. One, two, three. Okay, so maybe possibly four. So Abby's in, in double good shape there because she has two LADC supervisors. She has Trent, she has me. Um, Mariah and, and Shambri, you will want to complete LADC paperwork and have me sign off on it since I'm uh, LADC and LADC supervisor. So, um, yeah. That's the one where it has the 10 hours in each um, category, right? Uh, yeah, I've got it shared in the in our practicum uh, outline, and I'll, I'll, I'll go over that in just a minute. Okay. While I'm thinking about it, you all have a separate sheet. You want, you want to complete both, okay? Um, let's see here. You can... I have a question regarding that. Yeah. I know that I'm on the LPC um, track right now, and then I'm going to, sorry, and then I'm going to, one second, baby. And then I'm going to come back and do the LADC track. Uh -huh. um, do I need to require, is there any different requirements for that? Okay. So here's the, yeah. So here's the kicker. At least half of your clients have to have a diagnosis, an addiction related diagnosis. So if you're just working like with kids, you really can't count the hours yet either um, for LADC. So that's, that's one of the kickers. So I know Abby, Mariah, and Chambry, at least half of their clients have an addiction-related diagnosis. Okay. That's an excellent question. Um, so here's uh, just, you're welcome to read through these objectives. I'm not going to go through them ad nauseum. This is a long syllabus, so I'm going to try to hit the highlights. Please read through all of this, though, because um, all of this applies. We do align with, we try our best to align with KCREP. If you're truly doing a KCREP program, you would have a 700 hour internship experience rather than uh, 300 hours of practicum. And so that may be an issue for those of you that may be moving to different states uh, and you want to count more hours, please know that you're more than welcome. I would, I would uh, encourage you to count as many hours as you can um, in, in your practicum, get, get a, get my signature, your site supervisor's signature on as many hours as you can, because that's only going to be to your benefit. And uh, to point, point in case I was working at youth and family, they hadn't changed the rules yet for, for LADC. So this is 2004, 2003, my practicum, I had a thousand practicum hours because I was working as a drug and alcohol counselor. They didn't require at that time a master's to do drug and alcohol counseling. So I can I counted a lot of hours. And then so when I went to Colorado to get my PhD, they were like, hey, it, it, your class says it only has 300 hours. I said, oh, no, I have way more hours than that. So I was able to reproduce or find my documentation, show them. So I, I, basically it was an equivalency type of thing. So um, it is to your advantage if you if you count all your hours. Um, KCREP core standards, course requirements. <sighs> I probably need to go over this. Uh, you know, read through the handbook and syllabus. Uh, that's important. Uh, it's important to go over all of that. If if you haven't already met with me about your uh, practicum placement, contact me now. Email me. Say I need a meeting. Um, let's see here. 
There's a FERPA consent form. What this is, it's uh, located right here. Hopefully all of you are working on your liability insurance. We'll get that in, in just a moment. Each one of you will need to, um, here's the form right here. So you click on our left menu. Each one of you will need to complete this for your site uh, and, and specifically your, your site supervisor. What this allows is it allows a free two-way communication between uh, Northwestern and your site um, because it's necessary for us to discuss your development um, back and forth. So each one of you need to complete this FERPA release. Uh, and, and again, it's, it's, it's what, and you'll want to click this box. So this is, this is Northwestern's FERPA release. Any and all information related to this student's functioning as a Northwestern counseling practicum student. So it's specific to this class. Uh, I'm not going to discuss billing financial aid registry with your site supervisor. Um, and then so you'll put their name, uh, the, the address of their agency, and then a phone number. And then you'll need to sign it. You all are over 18, so you don't need to get your guardian. But what you'll do then is you'll go back to this same place and upload your, your FERPA consent there. Before you can accrue hours, you'll need to get that accomplished. So you get, you get a, a little bit of uh, credit for it, but it, it is necessary. All right, back to the syllabus. Okay, and the next thing, let me open another tab so we can just go back and forth. This is gonna get ridiculous. So the next thing will be your liability insurance and, and hopefully you all have, have started that process. Uh, it isn't hard. I think if you, has anybody got it from HIPSO yet? Has anybody actually like content you have Mariah how much and you have Megan how much was it now how much did they charge um, I want to say it was like 40 maybe around 40 seems like I it was 42 for anything you, okay did you join ACA Megan yes okay so it's free uh -huh. if, you, if you're an ACA member as a student it's free um it costs about a hundred dollars to become an ACA member but you get a lot of I I I don't mind the, the benefits. I, I've saved more than that with all my hotel travel, um, being an ACA member. Um, and you get, you know, you just get access to different resources. So the liability insurance tab is right here. You click on uh, the and, and so all you'll do is you'll upload your insurance right here. The, the big thing is you have to have it has to have the policy number, the effective dates, the amount of coverage, obviously your name. Um, it's just basically you giving me proof of coverage. There's, there are two forms that they usually send and students have gotten confused. Just know it has to include the policy number, the effective dates, the amount of coverage and your name um, to get credit for that assignment. That's worth 25 points. This is basically you get credit or you don't for these things. Okay. Students will complete log sheets and clock hours. Whew. Okay, so there's a lot. So utilization of Excel file log can be made by the student. This would be the same thing as what you were talking about with the Google Sheets. Um, you can actually, you know, have a log of your hours using Excel or, or Google Sheets. Where that's at is it's actually in your handbook. Alex pointed to it earlier. So I'm gonna access the handbook right now. And the hour sheet is like page 17 or something. It's down here. Here it is, it's page 19. So I, what I'm assuming is Dr. Kirby has reproduced something like this in uh, Google Sheets or on Excel. Is that right, Mariah? Yes, I just sent it to you. Okay, if you thanks. want to see if it'll work. Okay, thank you. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it will work. It's, it's, uh, it's an Excel sheet, but I can open it in Google and that's how I've been using it. Okay. Fair enough. 
Um, I'll, I'll share what it looks like. And I'll share this with all of you. I don't, it, it's just, and this is honestly, when I shared my hours with, uh, with Colorado, when I was, you know, going for PhD proving k -crip, I actually had mine saved in an Excel sheet from a long time ago. Uh, and, and then I had to go back and find my supervisor because I didn't, I couldn't find my old practicum paper log, but I found my supervisor and they signed off on, yeah, they, they, he did these hours. So, um, here is a copy of so this is what the excel sheet will look like and so it's a little bit different in format but you can see uh mariah it was for for one six so you want to change the dates obviously to match what we're doing here it'd be june 1st and then inter intake individual group family when you enter those in, it automatically adds them up on that yellow piece for you. But um, and, and it continues to add them every week. So in the yellow where it says totals, it'll it'll have total indirect hours. So that way you can make sure that it adds up on what you've been keeping track of. It's it's pretty helpful. And then me and Chambry kept a separate sheet in um, Google to actually um like define what we were really doing who we were working with their initials or whatever and added the hour i added up the hours on that sheet just to make sure that they were staying the same okay so that's that's pretty cool and it's got the, the big thing for this sheet so whether you do it this way uh, or you you use the um the one so you can do it either or i accept either one of them uh, or you can use the one that's actually in, in the handbook. Th this is, I can't stress this enough. So what you'll do and, and what the, what the digital sheet will do, it will, it will add up direct hours has to be 50 or greater. Indirect hours has to be equal to or greater than 100 total hours. All three of those have to be filled in. You'll sign, your site supervisor will sign and date, and you'll send this to me at the very end of the course. You'll upload it and I'll sign off on it. This becomes a part of your permanent, permanent record here at Northwestern to where if you needed like in five years to verify your practicum, okay, I've got your signature, your site supervisor, that way you're not like me trying to hunt down your supervisor to verify your hours. What was that 12 years afterwards? <laughs> so 13 years afterwards and your supervisor luckily is still alive, you know, or didn't move. So it's very, very important to, to keep this sheet. This needs to be extremely formal. I will, you will not pass this class if these are inaccurate. This absolutely 100% down to the hour have to be down to the quarter hour have to be accurate the reason being is because when you submit you'll submit something very similar to the licensure boards when you're when you're pursuing your license after you've done your supervision your 3000 hours or 2000 hours if you're LADC if you make mistakes the board can say all those hours are null and void and i've seen it happen you're like, I was just, a it's a clerical error. There is no room for clerical errors here. This is you signing off on this happened. Every semester, every single semester period that I've taught this, there's been at least one student fudge this up. And I'm like, and you won't get full credit for the assignment because it's absolutely necessary to be 100% accurate on this. There's There are very few things where I'm just like, in a box rigid i'm in a i'm in a box rigid on this you damn well better be 100 percent accurate on what you submit because it can mess with your license if you do the same thing on the next step yes uh, megan so if we do a task that's like i don't know 13 minutes do we round up or yep. we have to get 15 minutes excellent question so you use the seven eight minute if it's seven and a half minutes or over it's 15 if it's under seven and a half minutes it didn't happen so let's say my session went 
23 minutes. Where do you round to? To 30. Yep, yep. My session went 22 minutes. Where do you round to? Fifteen. My session went fifty two minutes. Where do you round to? Well, I'm gonna round to that hour, right? It's over fifty minutes. Your session went fifty two minutes. Probably forty five. No, not pro yes, forty five. <laughs> yes, forty five. My session went fifty three minutes. An hour. You're like, God, geez, Taylor, this is this is ridiculous to come down to this level of detail. What it prevents is what happened to a former professor here and his family. And so they got, were very loose with their hours. Um, what it eventually became was uh, uh, it was a home based services. So, uh, and this evolved over a number of years, they were home-based services and, and what eventually started happening was all of them began to document hours like they saw Billy from eight to nine. They saw Susie from nine to 10. They saw Elliot from 10 to 11. They saw um, somebody else from 11 to 12. If you're doing home-based services, what's wrong with that? There's no time for in between, like clients showing up or clients leaving. Clients leaving. What did you meet Billy at Susie's house? Because <laughs> you just started the session right after. Because it's gonna take a, a diff, a distance, like even Ian. Like if you hit the train over here, like this. So there was there were years of of sessions where they would do home based services just like that. Upon deeper. Uh, evaluation outside of me all i did was audit the, the, the books Out, uh, upon deeper evaluation by other investigators what was happening is they weren't actually seeing these people at all i mean they would see him like once a week like they'd like once every other week so they'd see billy week one they'd bill for billy week two then they'd see billy week three they wouldn't see susie week one but they would see susie week two but they wouldn't see susie week three um, this was, this came out to a, what, what the damage was officially was over $250,000 worth of fraud, but it, I would say it was more. Um, and so that was the hardest thing I've ever dealt with in my life professionally. Um, because it was a former supervisor of mine, because it was, um, it was, it was an awful situation, but the way that started was people fudging their hours people fudge in their minutes and it evolved into something that was ridiculous and and a federal crime so uh, so yeah it needs to be to the minute seven minutes eight minutes up seven minutes down that's an awful thing to go through on all sides nobody nobody wins nobody wins in something like that Let's say that you go and uh, it's in it, it's so for instance, Taylor, I'm going to continue my practicum site before we start school in the fall, like I'm going to get done in January, J July 31st, but we're not starting our practicum until August 16th for the fall. Here's for some interim hours, so you can keep track of those, please know that the uh, ownership of the client at that time is really between you and your site supervisor, unless there is an issue with the site itself. In that case, like say you see something unethical or there's there's something your site supervisor can't help you with, then you need to contact me or Dr. Kirby um, to try to work that out. Otherwise, you're on your own with your site supervisor. And we'll, we'll go back. It's the same thing. It's just interim hours. So you have one one sheet total that will be for the, the, the formal semester, which runs through July 31st. If you get in between hours, there's another sheet. Those in between hours can we can still count those as 
Practice commit. Like, can we still count them for our LADC? Yep. Because our site supervisor is not an LADC. Oh, so I don't mind signing off on that. Okay. I don't okay. mind. That, that confused me a little bit. Thank no, you. I don't, I don't mind signing off on that um, because I know, I know <laughs> if I know your agency, know who you're working with and can verify that what you're doing is, is real. I, I don't mind signing off on that. Okay. Thank you. No. Okay. Let's go back to the syllabus. That's where we got into uh, uh, all this. Um, you have to do the three videos. You can do a fourth. If you really bomb one, let's see, you get a 50% on one. You can do a fourth. Most students do three. Um, it's what you've already done and supervised uh, in a little bit more depth and with a little bit more time. We'll go over that in, in more detail below. I don't want you to use other students. I would like for you to use different people. Okay, that's the that's the biggest thing here. If you can't find other people like real clients at your agency, get with me. Let's talk about somebody that's going to be you don't know them. How can how can you start to build rapport with somebody that you don't know? Because that's not something that I've been able to see with you. That's not something that you've been able to really appraise for yourselves either. How do I operate with somebody that I really kind of don't know? um students will meet with their site supervisor and and so you have to you have to do this site, a site supervision documentation we'll talk about that in a minute uh please be open to constructive feedback i mean if you st so constructive criticism being able to accept constructive criticism is is, is really important um, I, I don't do this to run people down. I do this to help you become a good counselor. Um, I want your client. I want your clients to get well because at the end of the day, that's what we're here for. Um, students. So, so you'll have a midterm and a final evaluation. Those are located right here. Here's the midterm evaluation. There's a form. It looks like this. This is just to make sure you're not getting lost. It's really quick. It's only like two pages. Um, there are only a few little uh, places where your supervisor. So you'll give this to your supervisor on you know the week of June 23rd. <clears throat> you'll want to give this to your your site supervisor, uh, maybe even the week of June 30th, to consider what how you've been, uh, and, and so site performance recognizes your own limitations your overall uh, they get to rate, rate your professionalism your your development the receptive receptivity to feedback your preparedness to work in the field you'll you'll document your hours at this point and then the the supervisor has a chance to make comments so you'll sign it your site supervisor will sign it and it, it you'll just upload it here so it's uploaded the same place so you'll upload it here, your midterm evaluation. That's to make sure you're not getting behind. I mean, I've had students that sometimes halfway through, they're at zero hours. I'm like, how are you going to make this? How is this going to work? Um, not, not the 16-week course, but I have had that on this course. Um, okay. Uh, let's see here. Students are required to maintain your insurance. I've already talked about that. You know the ACA ethical codes. You really be work on your professionalism. You know, don't show up in sweats. Don't show up. You know, if if it's the expectation and the culture of the agency, make sure you match your apparel and the way that you're managing yourself. At this point, your emails shouldn't look like Twitter. You know, uh, communication or, or text messages. Your emails should be professional. Um, and I have we I have had a student that didn't make it because they completely were unprofessional on the site and it just grossly unprofessional. Um, being late consistently not falling asleep in session, I mean there was a whole there are a whole host of issues that were that were not appropriate. Um, submit and keep all logs so your logs are also in your handbook so there are a lot of logs to keep track of this is what mariah and shamri were talking about 
they're keeping another digital. So if you can rep reproduce these digitally, I'm okay with that. Uh, I just need to be able to see what they are. So here was page 19, the in-between semester hours. Here's a monthly log sheet. And this is where I think Shamri said she talks about what she was doing in more detail. So what you can do is you can just use these and then at the end go and fill in your the bigger sheet. This is a consent form. So if, if you and you should fill this out for anybody that you record for your, your three hours of, of, uh, of sessions. It's a consent form. You'll need to upload that with your video. Or with yeah yeah with your video each week each week please bring this form to your supervisor and you'll document what you talked about during your eight weeks of one hour supervision with your supervisor you need to fill us out do not have your supervisor fill us out so write down what you discussed write down you know your plans or goals or outcomes any comments You'll detail your hours for the week, your indirect hours for the week. Your supervisor will sign it, you'll sign it. That, that, so reproduce this at least eight times for this course. At the end, at the end of the course, this, uh, so this is July 30th, you know, that, that last week. This takes some time. This will take your supervisor probably 15 minutes to do. And if you want to just use your, your you know, hour long session with them to do it, I would advise you to do it. <clears throat> just say, hey, I've got to do this for the class. It's going to take you a little bit. Um, I don't want to abuse your time. So here it is. It's five pages. The supervisor, you know, fill this out for, for them, your name, the date of the evaluations, the site, all that stuff. Your supervisor will go through and rate you on a lot of different things. Basic work, work requirements. You're welcome to read through this, but it is a lot. It is five pages. And so your supervisor will need to sign off on that. And again, I need this. If I don't have these, your final assignment is worth like 100 points. This is like either a pass fail kind of thing. I, I, I need all these. Um, you need to provide all these. You'll also rate your supervisor and your placement so this is for you so i want to know as as a, as a practicum instructor here at northwestern hey is this an appropriate placement does this uh, uh, and so you get to rate your experiences is, is this supervisor do they really suck at that moment i hopefully you've already had a conversation with me rather than just submitting it on a piece of paper um but there have been times where this the sites have been completely inappropriate people are doing unethical things and that really sucks because like, what do I do now? I mean, I'm, I'm trying to get hours. I need to make the, sure these count. Um, I don't want people to hate me. This or, I'm just a student. Um, so please contact me quickly. If, if you see something that's not above, you know, board, um, that's, that's difficult. And I don't want to put anybody in that situation. And we do have places we will not use because of, bad student you know experiences so if if, if a placement you can, can you know continually abuses our our students then no we're not going to place you there <laughs> you're not appropriate and we have had that unfortunately okay that's the end of that's the end of the uh of the handbook <clears throat> real quick i don't know if i missed that but okay so this evaluation form is done once a week. The one page, yeah. During the supervision meeting, page or is it the okay? What you're doing, yeah. The the one page there is something that you'll do each week with your supervisor. I know it's a lot of paperwork. It just it just is. I have a quick question. So on the monthly log sheet that you were showing in the handbook, what I was talking about earlier, the Google sheet that we were using, where we put the date, the time that it started, the time that it ended, and then what we were doing for that amount of time. That's what we were turning in for our first practicum. Would that be still appropriate or do you want us to fill out that monthly no, log? No, if you've already created something that's that will fit that need, then I'm going to accept it. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's just, 
I'm uh, so the one that Alex talked about. I'm, I'm that that needs to be signed off on each week. But the one where you're like the monthly log, yeah, that's that's for you. That's to help you keep track of it. I'm less so. So I've had this happen. I've had a student or two turn in that monthly log sheet and all of that didn't complete because they were doing it by hand. All that didn't completely jive with their their totals, but their supervisor already signed off on their totals and they signed off on their totals. The, the thing that's formal that stays with you is that that final record where it has your your signature, your supervisor's signature and my signature. I'm not going to sign off on your monthly logs. Your your site supervisor is not going to sign off on your monthly logs. Those are there for you to help keep track. Okay. So really, you know, when it comes down to it, the real for, to me the biggest formal thing is that uh, that total sheet. It's got those three signatures. Be a hundred percent accurate on that. Okay. So total sheet. This is the one you're talking about, right? Yeah, I'll I'll uh, I'll, I'll pull it that back. That has all the I'll, that I'll, has the three signatures. So it is it is this one right here. This 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 will follow you. This is your practicum hour long. It's it's page eighteen, okay. and it's got the three totals: the direct, indirect total of hours, and then the three signatures. This one needs to be like you're gonna publish it in a book or it's just going to be on display at this you know smithsonian museum i mean it's, it's like this needs to be 100 percent accurate okay when can so we... this this sheet that you have up right now it oh sorry i'll put it back up um where where do we put the end on this because it just has like the individual group and then other direct is the so um, here's column oh, headers. This is indirect over here. So so you can see this is total indirect on this side. So anything on this side of the sheet, these final three columns, this is all indirect. So okay. You'll probably have a lot of miscellaneous hours. Honestly, students have a, have a lot of miscellaneous hours because they're studying, because they're doing different things. So your site supervision should be an hour a week. If you do group supervision at your at your site, I mean, obviously document that. Um, we had that at Youth and Family. Um, we had an individual and we had a group supervision meeting. Any clinical staffings, I would count that as group supervision, you know, as far as what your agency is uh, requiring. Um, here's your direct hours in the middle. So then you add these, then you add all these up in the middle that comes up with your total direct. <clears throat> you add all these up, these last three columns, that's your total indirect. You add these two, that comes up with your total. And then folks will sign off on it. Now you'll only fill out the first eight weeks of this because you're in the summer. And so this is the, this is a full 16 week form, but you'll only fill out, I mean, don't worry about weeks 10 through 17. You'll only be filling out these first eight weeks. So you're keeping track of your weekly total. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's go to make through make sure we get through the syllabus. <clears throat> All right, so here's how you'll be graded. Uh, the FERPA form is worth five points. You'll have to acknowledge you understand and read fully uh, the, the syllabus and handbook. Your liability insurance assignments worth 25 points. Your practicum site agreement, site description, uh, site supervisor practicum contract, that's worth 50 points. This is, this is the thing that you really will work on this week, okay? So that is that this starts on number one. So you can't start direct hours until you have a practical contract signed. Uh, and so this will be between you and the agency and us at, with Northwestern. You'll have to upload this hopefully this week or, or excuse me. I, when I say this week, I'm really thinking about until Friday next week. Okay, so this first full week, um, 
please look through this. This is your official contract. If you don't have a, an official contract, we don't have a way to get you hours. And so read through this. This talks about the uh, requirements and, and what's expected. And so there will be several people sign. So I will, I will sign the, the document your agency so so the person the agency that the, the administrator where you're getting your practicum hours has to sign this here and then you sign it at the bottom so again there are three signatures on the contract there are also going to be three signatures on the hours the you may not have your site supervisor sign this this may need to be the the administrator like like the ceo or something of, of wherever you're at um, so, so for instance, I don't know about youth and family. Youth and family probably could have Josh Gwynn sign this. Uh, it might might be Tree Perkins because Tree Perkins is the is the clinical is the executive director. Josh Gwynn is the clinical director. So, uh, I do need to have somebody that has some authority at that agency to sign this. I'll sign it. You'll sign it. We had Josh sign ours. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Just it needs to be somebody with a, a decent amount of authority, either over their clinical programs or over the whole agency. So you met with what was her name, Megan? Allie, Craig. Yeah, Allie. Allie would be able to sign it for for Grand. <clears throat> okay. So I've already I've already had this signed. Okay. Do I need to wait for you to sign it and then no. let me know before I start? No. So once you get once you sign it, once that's a great question. Once you sign it, once the 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 site signs it, upload it here and I'll sign it. So. If, if you have two signatures, upload it over here with your contract, with, with, uh, with your supervisor agreement, I'll sign it, make it part of your documents. Okay, but you're also uploading this at the same time. So you need to go through and fill out this practicum placement description. Talk about what's available there. Uh, you should be doing this at the same time, you know, you're talking to the the site about your placement and for me and chambry we have to turn all these in again correct yeah just use the ones you've already turned in don't don't okay. don't redo it just if you've already okay. done this. and same thing so think about practicum two everybody that's here this is your practicum one you'll just upload these again in the fall they don't have to be re-signed so just just get them signed once they just have to be continually uploaded for the because we have different practicum instructors and so we've got to have for each course the necessary documents. So just just keep them. Uh, they're good for a year. The the, the signatures are good for a year. <clears throat> um, so yeah, you'll you'll. This is important. You know, make sure you document who the supervisors that are available and their type of license certification. Just has to be some sort of mental health professional. Could be social worker. Could be marriage and family. Could be L L A D C L P C. Just has to be somebody that's. Uh, it could be a psychologist. Should be could be a psychiatrist. It just has to be some sort of mental health profession, a master's level or above. We have had a couple people uh, supervised by psychologists before, so you know that that works. We have to have this uploaded too. You ha we have to document how you're going to deal with crises. Um, who are you going to contact for a suicide attempt, a drug overdose, aggressiveness, physical illness, psychotic reaction? How do you report child abuse or elderly abuse? Um, what's the what's the procedure at the agency? So this needs to be addressed in your meeting, first meeting with that site. Um, what are the crises procedures? We need this uh, uh, as far as Northwestern to make sure that you're covered, that we that we have these emergencies covered. Um, who do you contact in case of emergency? It should be the site. It should not be us who don't know the agency. It shouldn't be Dr. Kirby or myself. It needs to be a person on site and there needs to be a, a backup person at the site to call because we're not going to get involved in agency business and then get caught up in some liability. It needs to, the emergency that happens on site needs to be handled there. Now, if you go through a situation and it's a suicidal response or report, you need to contact me as early as possible. Send me an email, say, hey, I, I've gone through this. I need to speak with you about this, particularly if it's if it's, you know, if, you know, if it's a traumatic experience, I want to know it as you know, at the earliest time possible to be able to support you. Um, 
you know, this, we're not in with kid gloves. Now you guys are on site. You guys are, are, are dealing with, you know, real situations with real people. And so, um, if, if all else fails, if that system fails, uh, let me, let me give you, let me give you my cell phone. If that system fails, I can't guarantee I'm going to be here. If that, if that system fails, you can contact me, but nine one one is probably the next bet, especially if it's, a, if it's a, uh, like a like an immediate situation um th there'll be times this semester like you know the first part of july i'm not gonna be in cell phone service you know just that first couple of days so um it's not gonna be something that i can really respond to okay make sure that's that's very very important All right. And then so this goes over practicum requirements. So what you'll submit to me this first really big assignment. <clears throat> the contract on page 12 and 13. The placement description. This is 14 and 15. The crisis management plan That's page 16. All those things will go over here under this practicum supervisor supervisee contract so you click on this all those forms will be uploaded here questions on that so just to confirm it's the FERPA release the liability insurance and the contract that needs uploaded this week so, so this this if before next friday what i'd like to see everybody be able to do liability insurance FERPA form. These these will be you can do these right now without meeting with the site. Then all these the, the three documents we just discussed under this um you know the, the the contract site agreement site description and the emergency plan. So these these are these are your tasks for this week. Liability, FERPA, then the three forms that go under here. There's a lot to do with the LADC practicum information. Yeah. So yeah, I, uh, let me go over that quickly. LADC right. that only applies to a few of you. Here's the LADC practicum form. You'll submit this at the final at, at your at part of your final paperwork. Um, this you, you'll eventually submit to the LADC board. It's, it's their paperwork. Um, it's different in that you have to fulfill the 12 core functions and you have to get at least 12, uh, 10 hours in each one of these client screening intake assessment treatment plan orientation counseling case management crisis intervention client education client follow-up and referral record keeping reports that'll be a lot of hours consultation that'll be a lot of hours so you get a minimum of 10 although i expect many of these to be well more than 10 if you add all these up, 10 times 12 is 120. So you'll probably, you'll have at least 50, you know, 50 hours here in counseling somehow. Um, you'll have at least your first. What, what I, and, and also let me, let me back up. If you're in practicum two, get all of your hours for me to sign off on. Cause I'm, I'm the only LADC supervisor. Well, besides Trent, but um that will that's teaching a class so make sure that you get my signature so you get credit with the ladc board so this is separate this doesn't apply to most of you this is the only the folks that are that are um trying to get that ladc credit and i have heard that with our ladc hours and our practicum hours those count concurrent for our supervision hours correct okay. so we could be like halfway done by the time we graduate so so yeah um, yeah. Yeah, uh, you and uh, Abby, Abby's definitely knocking the hours out of the park right now. So she'll probably have hers done when she graduates. That's a, so L LPC is different. LPC, you have to graduate first before you can start accruing hours. Okay. Do you want to see like our, our progress each week of what hours we've worked or 
I mean, do we have to do some kind of check-in with you or turn in? No, that's that's okay. going to be really my two check-ins are midterm and then at the at the end. Okay. So um, otherwise, I'm, we're just going to talk about your experiences. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll use this time as a group as kind of a staffing. At some point, we'll talk about you know maybe a recording or two to see where you all are at with those. Um, we'll talk about comps. Um, it's going to go quick. This 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 summer semester, you blink and it's over. Okay, let's make sure we get through the syllabus. Um, you'll uh, so this is another one, golly. Okay, so this go, you have until uh, you have a couple weeks to do this. So this, if you're in practicum one, you have a self reflection paper due here in the first couple of weeks, um, just on. Uh, what have you learned so far uh, in, in, the, in the program? What, what, what were your strengths and weaknesses? What do you want to do to grow, you know, in your practicum? Um, this, is, this is a different kind of assignment for, for practicum one versus practicum two. Uh, the, where you'll submit these um, is under self-reflection papers. Practicum one students, you have something to do within the first two weeks here. You'll submit it here. It's an in-depth reflection of you. Maybe how you've grown, where you're at right now. That is, practicum two students, you don't have to do this. But you do, practicum two students, you do have to do one at the end where you reflect on your whole practicum and, and really growth as a student throughout the whole program. So practicum one students, you have something to do within the first two weeks. Practicum two students, you have something to do in the last two weeks of class. Uh, paper needs to be three pages minimum. I expect more use of theory from practicum two students. So hopefully you've integrated more theory throughout this process. Um, here's a rubric for that assignment. Your recorded sessions. Oh my goodness, I still have people that don't. I mean, I think this group's decent, has, has finally gotten it, but um, you, it's a little bit longer. Uh, for practicum one, you're going at least 25 minutes, if it can be longer. Practicum two, your videos are 35 to 45 minutes. Um, again, you're picking out five to seven minutes to transcribe verbatim, and you're also labeling this. Like, you're, you're labeling nonverbals. You are specifically labeling what you're doing as a counselor intentionally. You had a car wreck, reflection of content, what happened, open in a question, needing, needed to encourage deeper disclosure use you know document micro skills document your theory document things this helps you gang this this helps you figure out okay and make synapses connect that okay yeah this is what i'm intentionally doing as a counselor and please pay attention to the highlighted portion of this and here's a rubric for this there's an option you have three of those at least you have the option of a fourth Midterms worth 50. That's I showed you that. That's you and your supervisor. Final eval, that's all your paperwork. And that's that's uh right here at the end. Just it's a it's a paperwork dump on me. <laughs> and so what you do is you dump everything that you've done into this final evaluation. That's worth a hundred points at the end. Um you please know you're being you're being evaluated for professional disposition. Uh, that's a pass fail grade. Uh, you're welcome to read through this here. Okay. Uh, if you if you have health issues, please, uh, or or you know a disability that could impact your performance, please contact uh, the following people here, uh, so we can make accommodations. And that's really important for this class because that would extend to your site, which. You know, different sites have different capabilities. Okay, course outline, intended schedule. This will give you uh, an outline of what all you need to accomplish. Please pay attention to this. Just make a checklist and, and check these off as you do them. That way, I know there's a lot up, up front, so just check things off as you do them. Your first uh, reflection paper, I said you have a couple of weeks. If you're a practicum one student, that's due uh, in two weeks. Um, your first session recording is due in a little over two weeks. So you need, oh my gosh, Taylor, you kill me. Uh, it's only eight weeks. So find 
somebody that you can uh, work on with your counseling skills record and um, and you'll have to again get their consent and, and so you're welcome to go through this uh, in, in quite a bit of detail your second recording is due the first week of July your third recording then is due like the third week of July the fourth recording if you choose to do it the final week Everything, okay, so I, we can't pass go. You'll either get an incomplete or, or not a passing grade. Everything has to be done by July 31st at midnight because I have a lot to review. There's nine, there's nine of you, and so um, there's a lot of paperwork to review at the end. If I don't have it, generally speaking, I, I tend to issue incompletes. Unless it just looks like gross negligence on your part. And then it's like, well, did you actually do this class? <sighs> that was a lot. The recording. Yes. I'm sorry, Alex. What? Is there a consent form that we. I'm so sorry. It's not. It's... Use for um, recordings. Is there a consent form that's already made that we use? Yes. Yes. Sorry. You, your, your audio is very delayed from what, you know. Uh, your lips are moving and then nothing's coming out. And then all of a sudden, here comes a whole bunch of, of words. So if I understand you correctly, is there a um, is there a form? And yes, it's in the handbook. And it is on page. So this is your consent form for your um, your victim. I mean, your your client that you'll that you'll be recording let me see if i can find it and you want different clients each recording or no. the same client i want you to pick one client i i would like for you to stick with them through both practicums i'd like you to pick somebody that you don't know and that you can develop a deep rapport with and that you can see over a long a, a period of time and and so uh, it's it's kind of like you're moving past supervised. Here it is. It's on page 21. With that being said, are you going to go back and watch mine and Shamri's videos? From first practicum? Yeah. Oh, unless you really want me to. If you want me to, uh, if you want me to see your growth. What, what I hope happens is that you all see your own growth. And that's typically what happens is like, oh my gosh, this is so much better than what I did. I feel way more comfortable and what you'll see what typically happens with those is people's clients will like be talking about this deep deep stuff and and you're there with them and you're okay with it and you find something together that's that's hopeful and helpful with them and so um that can be uh, that's really where I'm like yes they got it you know yes sarah um, so the person that we have as our, would you stop? Um, the person you that we cancel have. your dog. I'm sorry. <laughs> It'd be nice to you, but. Um, is it, does it have to be, you said it can't be another student. So is it just like somebody that we choose? It so, can be yeah. And so not somebody that's family, you know, it has to be somebody that's outside your circle or, or maybe just barely in your circle. Somebody that you don't have a pre-existing re relationship with. Somebody that's like, okay, so like, I don't know, we're, you know, there are six degrees. Yeah, it can be a couple degrees removed. I just, it can't be a friend. It can't be a mom. It can't be an aunt. It has to be somebody that you're, you have some objectivity with. Can't be like a roommate. Could we do a client here? If if you get it, so that's ideal. So if you if your site placement allows this, youth and family allowed it when I was there. So if your site placement allows it, use one of your clients. That's what I do. Yep. Meadow Lake wouldn't allow it, and I don't blame them. I mean that's that's fine, but. Um, there, there, there are some sites that don't, but if, if you can use, use people at your site. 
Okay, gang, we're at 10.04. Any other big burning questions to get rolling? There's a lot, and it just, I wish this were 16 weeks, but it's, it is what it is. It's eight weeks, and we got to get through it. Did you, you said that we can roll hours over into practice too? So, okay. So if you don't get done, yeah, um, you, you get incomplete as long as you're showing like progress. Um, and, and so we can make this into like, the, the, the big thing for me is that you really can't count hours toward practicum two until you get done with practicum one. That's the big thing to remember. And that's okay. I honestly, even last time I taught this in the summer, 25% of the students got an incomplete because it was just too, it was too compact a time to get it done. So don't, I know it's, it's don't, don't freak out. It's it, an I turns into a grade. Okay. So that's, that's the big thing. It's not a W that just sticks out there. Um, an I will turn into a grade as long as you eventually work on it. Yes, Sarah. Um, so say we don't get all of our direct hours done within this time frame. Can we use that? Um, what is it like two, three week? Yeah, use those in between hours. hours. You, you'll, you'll use that in between hours sheet that just says, hey, I'm, I'm adding hours on top of because that just needs to be there. So we know that I wasn't or Dr. Kirby wasn't like your point of contact. Like we're not it shows that we weren't meeting as a group if you, by using that in between hours sheet. OK, but we could possibly do that to finish up our summer our practicum one hour. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's a pretty easy thing. I mean, I, I submit an eye to the registrar. I'll give you like, okay, these are the things that need to be done. And then when you're done, you just email them to me or up, uh, what I'll do is I'll keep the course open. You'll upload them to the course that way that if anybody ever wants to go back and check, they see that you've completed it. So actually don't email me. Keep, keep, I'll, I'll keep the course open. You keep uh, submitting stuff in the course and then, and then uh, you'll, you'll get that grade once you get all those things in. Yes, Megan. Allie wants me to start working on um, their documentation today, and she wants me to count those as hours towards practicum. Do you consider that? You have her signature. Just upload it to me. Let's go. Let's get started. No, I mean, she has documents she wants me to review and go over, and she wants me to count that time towards my hours. Would you consider that indirect hours? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Just know you can't count any direct. So this goes for everybody. We can't count any direct hours till you have liability insurance in here. Okay. That's just absolutely 100% necessary. Okay. Any other questions? You're here, gang. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Can I speak to you after class if that's okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll hang on. Okay. We're here. It's the real deal. We're out in the real world, um, stepping into it. So, uh, you know, let's go. Let's let's make this thing happen. It's exciting. Um, I'm excited for you. I know this is a lot, but this is this is why you do this. This is we're here, like real people, not just mock sessions. So, um, I'm excited for you. I'm excited to be a part of this. Please, you know, reach out if you have anything. Um, I'll, I'll be here. I'll make time. Um, I'm excited. Let's let's go. Let's make this happen. Awesome. Thank you. All right. All right, everybody. I'll see you next week. Same time. Oh, my gosh. So look for an email from me because I have a continuing education event. Could people do Thursday if I do like, oh, my gosh, I know I've got something Thursday morning, too. What it, what is a decent time like? OK. I don't even know what to say because I, I, I have my mornings booked. How about would 10 a.m. Thursday? Would that be something people could do? No. What about 8.30 a.m. that Monday after, after next Friday? Maybe. I have groups that morning as well. Crap. Okay. <laughs> That's just why? Why? Okay. Just everything's crazy. Um, Look for an email from me. I'll probably go with that 8.30 on the Monday. It looked like I had some nods there. And, and then we might meet twice next week. Not next week. Next week, we probably won't meet. But then the week afterwards, uh, we might meet twice that week, like Monday and then the Friday. 
Okay. Okay. Everybody be good. Reach out to me if you need anything. Uh, I'll look for your paperwork. See ya. And I'm here, Sandra. Hey, what's going on? Okay. So I got, I talked to the youth and family uh, place. They allowed me to do my practicum there. Um, I know that for the next fall semester, I will have issue trying to get my hours. Mm -hmm. And since I'll be working. Um, so get as so many as they, you can get. <laughs> okay. So they just wanted to make sure that it was allowed. And um, I was wondering if it will be okay for me to try to do as many hours as I can this uh during the summer, they will allow me to get as many hours direct or indirect, everything like that. Get as many as you can get, um, and then and then we'll we'll deal with what we have to in the fall. Okay. So yeah, you can always go over. I mean, I went way over as as a student, what what I was doing. So you can always go over. Okay. And then since I'm doing the LPC track right now, and then I'm gonna come back and do the LADC track, do I need to worry about any practicum hours for that or how okay, would that work? So you can, and this is, I've had to do this for many people <clears throat> when I was at a clinical director. If you don't get a practicum in school, then they count your first 300 hours of work as practicum. So you can't count those towards your like 2000 hours toward your license. So, but you can count your 300, like first 300 as practicum. So it's okay. They'll still let you work. It's just like they, they will then count your first 300 hours of work as your practicum. Okay. Okay. So, and, and also if you're, if you're working with people with addictions at youth and family, I mean, let's think about a way to maybe count some of those. If not, if it's just with the kids that don't have addictions, that's okay. Okay, because I know they said that for direct hours that I could be talking to parents too. So I don't know if yes, they yeah, might family. I forgot. To, oh my goodness, I forgot to mention that. So yes, family is our direct hours. Okay. Absolutely. 